We've um, we've got another guest for you tonight, who's no um, he's no stranger to the show. He's been on the couch a couple of times. Uh, he hasn't been on the couch for quite some time. He was going to be a big major player at D-Day. He's one of our major sponsors. He's an all-round good guy. And at the moment, he's a member. He's the chief member of the KKK in Oatsaw. And he's cover us around. Can you hear me, my Bruce? <laughs> so we, we haven't had the KKK on the show ever before, Bru. Well, welcome to the show. Uh, do you want to tell everybody what the KKK is? Uh, yes, you are. I felt quite like a warlord today putting up this banner for the claim Kahuna Quarantine. Great to see you guys. Yeah, well done. It's good to see you too. How are you guys coping through lockdown? Absolutely loving it. <laughs> I mean, it is the best thing. Shit, before this, I was home two nights every three months or so. Yeah, it's and, a stoner's uh, dream. Thank you, it is amazing. Uh, I mean, we're getting some of the best trim bud you've ever seen because everybody gets to spend time doing it properly. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we're just having fun. I mean, um, no, it's interesting times. We also quite busy. Uh, our non-profit is non-stop busy collecting food parcels and distributing that in the communities and uh, yeah, running around like crazy. But um, overall, I must say, I won't complain if this goes on for a bit longer. <laughs> and you, is there, are you an essential um, uh, industry in any form with all, of your, with all the gardens that are growing or are you managing to sell anything? Yeah. Yeah, so we were actually deemed an essential service from day one. So Oatswood and Burmais, the joint in Ardespoort and the Tok House in Victoria North uh, were operating during lockdown. Um, we also had to just luckily be quite used to reading through government gazettes and rules and things like that. So we were pretty quick to get our shit in order and get all the social distancing and hygiene things in place. Um, we ran a pickup service until the four started, and we're doing a tuck shop style service um, at all of the clubs and shops at the moment. Uh, we couldn't, I, I, I was trying to push it a bit to still open more places during the lockdown, but um, thank goodness we, <laughs> we can take it a bit easy and uh, recoup and regroup and spend a bit of time at home. That sounds great. And, 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 and to take a little bit of a break. Oh, okay. And yeah, for sure. Yeah. And how's it going with the um, how's it going generally with the feeling round there? Have you got loads of cops on the street? Is the army in town? Is it feeling oppressive where you are? Yeah, you know, I see the thing is tools. I think our community is very aware of the presence of the police and the and the military because we've got the army base and the police college in town. So in general, people are really sticking to the rules and trying to do, you know, being responsible and whatever. We've got our roadblocks, we've got our presence there. We didn't have the visit from the cops on day one when we operated our social club. And they too. But they were all happy to pay for it. They did provide a provision inspection on the place and they were happy. They said that they yeah, weren't, we weren't to care about them from them. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's good news. Yeah. Sure, that's like... So, you can send us a guide on how to train your local cops, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think, you, you know, like, like I told you guys from day one, it's, it's the community thing that matters. Um, we're very fortunate. Um, we've got three and a half thousand members in our social club at the moment. It's all good people. It's all people trying to make a difference in their community in their own ways. Um, mm -hmm. From all walks of life, you know. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's not it's not something you know it's so cool. David Quinn doing this cannabis cares thing, you know, um, where stoners can finally stand up and be a stoner. Yeah, you know? I've never been pro any video where you rip a bong or smoke a joint. Or whatever. No. But I mean, it works. It works. It works. It works. It works. It works. 
So, um, it's so cool to see that the, you know, that the real personalities are coming out of the woodwork and yeah. in a time of craziness, you know, that some people are keeping their sanity. And I really think our community has got a huge opportunity to turn stuff around after, you know, call it post-lockdown. Because I think we've got an interesting road ahead and communities are going to play a big part of it. I think you're right. They really are. And, you know, the fact that all the multinationals have all walked away as a result of this, maybe this just was the final nail in the coffin for them trying to operate in, Amer in, 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 in Africa. Maybe that is another opportunity for us, Kourvis. I know you've, you've probably been listening to the show off and on. We've been covering this subject over the few weeks of lockdown about trying to expedite some sort of emergency law to make it compulsory for everyone to grow weed. You know, something ridiculous, yeah. but turn it into an essential service like the Americans have without changing the laws. It's strange times and we need strange laws. Yeah, I completely agree. And, and, and you know where, where I think the focus is going to be, people are realizing we need to start voting with our money. We need to start spending our money in places where we know it's going towards communities that are looking after themselves, looking after each other. And in creating these groups, in all these organizations, all of us are running, and all these social clubs that's popping up everywhere, it's just creating opportunities for these little center points of communities to start growing. And um, even the multinationals in the organized agriculture, that's going to change. People are going to start outsourcing more local, closer to home. You know? I want to know who I support at the end of the day, because during times like these in uh, uh, democracy like we are living in, uh, it gets tough out there. And we pretty much realize very quickly that we, we're on our own. Um, so yeah, uh, the, the cannabis community, uh, I think we can do better, but shit, we actually do not doing bad standing together. I'm, I'm pretty proud to say I think that we're doing a very good job of changing the perception of stoners, actually. Yeah. yeah. And it's places like One Culture that are, are really, and, and things like, uh, DQ Central's initiative, it, it really does help change that negative um, sort of image that we've always had. I'm mm -hmm. loving it. And everybody's confined and they're stuck on Facebook and they're stuck on social media, so you keep putting the message out and they're going to see it. I just want to do a couple of shout outs. I just want to do a couple of shout outs on the thread here. Gerd's watching, mm -hmm. Lorraine is watching, Terry Martin's watching in Cape Town. Uh, Jesse Daniels says it's very cloudy in here. It's not very cloudy in here. There's hardly any smoking going on here. Chris Cader, I was hoping you'd be on the thing. Chris is um, part of um, Sacred Seeds. And Sacred <laughs> Seeds sent Myrtle and I a really cool goodie bag this week of some T-shirts, some grinders, and some seeds, and some other seeds, and a whole bunch of stickers and stuff. So we really appreciate your generosity. Um, uh, Sacred Seeds were going to be a major sponsor this year at D-Day, so we had them in the bag and then D-Day didn't happen, so they kind of left the fold, so it's all sorted out till the next time. And um, yeah, D-Day's going to happen. We, it's, 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 uh, we don't know when it's going to happen. Uh, they could have us locked down till when? Three years? Five years? Till we just don't remember what it was like before. Just hearing the word September. <laughs> <laughs> well... September means spring. Spring is a good thing. Um, I don't know. I don't know what they're trying to prove anymore. I don't know. Do, do you do you know Corbus? You know of anyone personally that's completely out of business yet? Have you had anybody close to home that's totally ruined in the last what six weeks? Uh, we're having a lot of conversation, Jules, again with these with the social club being involved with uh, over three and a half thousand people on a personal level. There's a lot of members with our jobs. A lot of people. Um, yeah, uh, it's it's crisis stations at this point, you know, and it's really, um, I don't think it's really sunk in yet, uh, the extent of this, the impact, um, but in a small town like Oatsburn, we've had a five-year drought, uh, everybody was looking forward and banked and gambled on the Klankaru uh, Kinsterfeest, the National Pots Festival, which then got cancelled, and uh, yeah, I mean, with 225 guest houses um, in the area, and no agriculture. Everybody, everybody suffered. No, yeah, it's a guest house thing is the thing. Yeah, it's, uh, just no shops and no, I mean, yeah. no guest houses, no food. 
Anyway, I, I believe he's speaking at eight o'clock tonight. Once it was fake and then it wasn't fake and now it's back on again. And at six o'clock tonight, uh, the Citizen nice. Online. Done for now, on a Thursday night. Sorry. Has anybody, has anybody got an update about the president anywhere? Is he speaking at eight? Not that I'm going to listen. I can't stand his voice any longer. I'll get it later. Emil's in the house. Yeah. Hello, Emil. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Kubis, there's no. Have you tried traveling anywhere? Have you been across a Have you been across a state border yet? Across a provincial line? No. And have you have you got some? No, and you've got. I'm itching. You can imagine. I'm itching to pack my box and try my luck at any airport I can. Right? Uh, I, haven't, I haven't been able to take myself away from my. Dude, I've, I've lived on this property for 33 years and it's the first time ever there's no aeroplanes, ever. It's the weirdest wow. thing. It's like a dull thud in your head of silence. It's so silent, it's making a noise. <laughs> it's like living next to a sea with no waves. <laughs> That's standard. I do it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, have you... I suppose you covers every time I see you, you've got another plan to expand into some other area. Is it kind of all on hold in your head at the moment because of the 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 the, the, the like the uncertainty of it all? Look, Bulls, I think like anything else in life, it's up to us to decide what's going to happen and what's not going to happen. Um, we had to put on hold the launch of uh, Bud and Bean with our friends from Bolton and Buds in Strand, Alderbach. Um, but that's coming very soon. We had to put on a whole tiny town in Pretoria East uh, in Silver Lakes. But that's coming very soon. And we had to put on hold the pottery in uh, Port Elizabeth with your friend um, Aidan Berry. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> My word. Ah, it's a small world. It's a small world. Normal, that sounds really exciting though so there's some good things to look forward to after all of this look is um, finished yeah but um, because we you know the services on the on the grow shop side is all services we can offer is uh, deemed essential so even during full lockdown we'll be able to offer those so the grow shops will definitely roll out one in uh, uh, strand alderberg is already open cape Canal. And the button beam will roll out. Uh, and I say soon, we're hoping for end of this month uh, at least. And um, yeah, so any new members are welcome to go and check out all our online stuff and then see where the nearest club is. Um, lockdown has put on a bit of a handbrake, but I think we, we find our systems and we're a lean, mean team. And um, yeah, we don't like to bring, bring you the best of one culture. Is, is is your original Oatsorn premises still the same premises? You haven't moved out of Oatsorn. You've, you've, you've still got the same place, yeah? So we had a little shop, the Bloom shop, where we started off in Oatsorn, um, where we had one single room as our social club. We then moved just down the street right. a couple of blocks away That's... into a house called the Bloom House. <laughs> and, um, yeah, we're still in Oatsorn and going strong. And uh, obviously now you can't you can't have any pedestrian traffic. You can't. There's no people walking in and out really. Uh, you know, look, the thing is, during level four, so level five is quite strict, um, where people have their permits and everything needs to be driven around for level for, for complete lockdown. We only do a call and pick up service because you can't do deliveries during level four. It's slightly better. So, you know, we've got a permit that we can have people in our shops. Um, we prefer to run a tuck shop style. So people come through, uh, all the grow equipment, everything is still for sale. And we just make sure that we adhere to the max maximum occupancy and social distancing. And obviously, uh, all the um, uh, sanitizing club. Yeah, I'm going to buy it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, best person for the job. <laughs> you, you're telling, you're telling me. <laughs>